living thing is made up of cells. Your skin, blood, heart, every tissue and organ in your body begins its existence as a single cell that divides and divides again. is a bumpy film of fatty molecules. Proteins rise like trees from this oily layer to pump and channel minerals and nutrients through the membrane. Other proteins use their branches to trap hormones that activate the cell. Some hormones are small enough to slip through the membrane to instruct the cell to move, grow, divide, or even die. Larger hormones dock at the protein receptors. The receptors send messenger molecules to the enzymes and organelles crowding the cell. Some messages reach a network of tubes called the endoplasmic reticulum. Channels within the tubes then release calcium, triggering cell activity. Together, messenger molecules and calcium command microfilaments to contract or relax. They may also tell the cell membrane to recycle its components. Tiny honeycombs of proteins swallow up pieces of membrane along with hormones and their receptors. After ingesting its host, the protein structure falls apart, liberating a balloon-like vesicle into the traffic of the cell. The protein building blocks are then ready for a new round of ingestion. Mitochondria are organelles that provide the energy the cell needs to operate its pumps, motors, and micro-machines. This miniature power plant uses motor proteins to cruise along microtubules on its journey through the cell. A thick soup of enzymes, micromachines and organelles, called the cytoplasm, performs the daily tasks of the cell. The chore of making proteins for export to other cells is carried out in the tubular maze of the endoplasmic reticulum. Our small hormones plunge through the cytoplasm toward the cell nucleus. Increasing numbers of microtubules signal the presence of the centrosome. The centrosome sends out microtubules that lengthen and shorten in all directions, controlling traffic within the cell.
The nucleus is the largest organelle of the cell. Guarding entry are the nuclear pores that sort incoming messages, routing the hormones toward the genes. Within a single nucleus, the DNA necklace can be made of a hundred thousand different genes. A hormone, before it can find its target gene, binds with a nuclear protein receptor. then joins with other couples on the crowded dance floor. Together they attach to the particular gene the hormone came to meet. The gene then relays the hormone's desire for the cell to grow, divide, or die. To carry out the order, proteins gather at the site, forming a micro-machine that reads and transcribes the gene. The genetic code is read on the DNA double helix. The twisted strands of DNA consist of complementary pairs of four nucleotides, the building blocks of the genetic code. We can think of the nucleotide molecules as letters of an alphabet and the genes as books. DNA is a giant molecule made of atoms of carbon, hydrogen, and other elements neatly organized into a double helix. As the micromachines twirl along the strand of DNA, they decipher the genes and transcribe them in the form of RNA molecule. Once completed, the RNA detaches from the DNA strand. The RNA then leaves the nucleus through the nuclear pore for the cytoplasm. There, the RNA will provide the code to make the proteins that carry out the hormone's instructions. If the order is to divide, the cell will make an exact replica of its DNA to pass on to the daughter cell. The process of DNA replication takes place in the nucleus where micromachines make accurate copies of the original. 